Do I have audio, Mike? Can yes, you, you, you do okay. indeed. Yep. Okay. Yep, loud and clear, four by four. Perfect. <clears throat> wow, that sounds aggressive. <laughs> Who's winning the hockey game? Uh, I don't know. Who's winning, Gar? Gar? Who's winning? Uh, Russia. Russia. Oh. That's the men's hockey. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And there's Bill. Hey. <laughs> Percy Best. Oh, there's Becky. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, Becky, where's the link if people want to join? It's located on our website under the local governance reform page. That's what I thought, but. It's also on our social media accounts. And the meeting here. OK. Great. Hi, everybody. There's Andrew. It's been uh, two years of Zoom and Microsoft Teams meeting, and I, I still, every time I go on a call and I see a bunch of squares, I just think of the Brady Bunch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Or, uh, or, or that game show from back in the... Yes. Celebrity uh, Squares. Yes. Celebrity Squares. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Hi, folks. Jamie. Good evening. Hey, Matt. How hey, Matt. is there? There's Matt. Yeah. Nice map. Yeah. Yeah, spending a little bit of time look, spending a little bit of time looking at that map lately. I have 5.59 on the clock, so we'll wait, we'll wait one more minute, I guess, and we'll start right at 6. My tablet says 6, but I don't mind waiting. Who's right? That's the question. Yeah. Oh, it says, it says 6 now. Yep. Yeah. Look who popped up at 6 o'clock. All right. Well, hello, everybody, again. It looks like I've been, I'm looking at the participant list and that I was trying to remember who was on last time. So we might have some new faces, but uh, anyway, good night or good evening, everyone. Um, I guess uh, I'll just I'll call the meeting to order. It is six o'clock. Um, and just before we begin, I'll, I'll just do a land acknowledgement. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq peoples. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship, which Mi'kmaq peoples first signed with the British crown in 1725. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. We, the members of this committee of council and town staff assisting us, pay respect to the elders past and present and descendants of this land. We honor the knowledge keepers and seek their guidance as we strive to develop closer relationships with the indigenous people in New Brunswick. 
Um, so just again, just to set the rules like last time, if you could keep your uh, mics muted, that would be great. Um, and just put your hand up to speak or try to, to wave, I guess. I only have nine people that I can see on the screen, so maybe it's better to put your uh, the hand up so I can see in the participant list. Um, <clears throat> so on the agenda, um, next on the agenda is just an update from the chair. So just a, a, a brief report on uh, the last meeting. So we, we met last Wednesday, February 2nd at 6 p.m. It was a, I think we adjourned at 7.30. Tonight we'll try for an hour if possible. Um, we, or I, I guess I gave a, a, a brief rundown of the reform history leading up to, let's say the end of December, uh, 2021. We also had an update on our current situation, which was basically everything that's happened from 20, uh, December 2021 leading up to the end of January or last week. Um, we talked about uh, the province having establishing two committees, an advisory committee, which would be um, council and LSD representatives, and then a administrative um, committee. Uh, we talked briefly about communications, uh, and then the advisory committee and uh, what that looked like with um, reporting. Uh, we did discuss boundaries, uh, although it looks like the map has been slightly redone. So I think boundaries are pretty much set, although we'll probably find out more about that at the advisory committee meeting just to make sure that that is accurate. Um, and then I guess last week we, we talked about the uh, the type of the sorry the composition of council and uh, the the number of councillors we needed to be determined by February 11th, uh, but that, of course we know that that date has now been pushed. Um, so I guess that's it for the minutes of last week. It was an hour and a half, and it seems like that was um, not a lot of material, but there was a lot of discussion, which was good. Um, so. Uh, did anybody have any questions? Anybody wanted to say anything about about that just before I move on? Mike, did you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Uh, thank you. Just a question, um, because um, we are getting rep we get reports back from the um, advisory committee you're going to. Uh, is council going to receive updates from the? Uh, uh, the other advisory committee on a regular basis? The administrative committee? That's correct, yep. Um, well, I, I guess I, I can't answer that for sure because I don't I don't really know the particulars of what that, uh, of the reporting, but my guess is that um, we would get updates at council meetings from uh, from staff from the uh, the administrative committee. That That's just my guess, I, I really, haven't heard anything. Um, I don't know if Sean has heard anything from um, uh, from the transition lead uh, or the facilitator, I should say. But I, that's just my understanding that we'll probably get updates through council meetings as we go on. And, and now I'm not saying that for sure. That's that's just what uh, what I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. I asked because I think we should be getting, uh, and I'll let other councilors weigh in on it, but. Uh, because of our committee and because the information we're trying to gather, we should get the updates back. But that's my opinion. Thank you. Well, I, I agree. I think that it would be nice to hear um, uh, some of the topics that are covered by the administrative committee, because this is really the bulk of what the reform is, right? I mean, it's it's all the operational stuff that's going to be done by staff, and it would be nice to know uh, what's discussed and um concerns that staff have and conversations but i i really don't know if we'll how, how much will be updated on that uh bill you had your hand up yes thank you um until the amalgamation takes place we are still the town council and we can direct staff to report to us so i don't think we have to ask or hope we will instruct whoever sits on it to report back to us whenever we want to, and I expect they would be happy to do that, but we have the authority to ask them to do that. On a completely unrelated note, um, we have more than nine people on the call. Under the three dots at the top that says more actions, you can select large gallery and see everybody, just for your information, Mr. Chair. <laughs> 
thank you very much for pointing out my my uh, technical inefficiencies. I I appreciate that, Bill. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, oh, Jamie. Uh, sorry. Did you want to say something as well? Yeah. Th thanks. Um, thanks, Deputy Mayor. I guess the, the I missed a bit of the question from from Councillor Tower. My audio went a bit sketchy, but it, it was the question about whether what the reporting format would be on the administrative side back to council. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I guess we that committee has not met yet. We're scheduled to meet uh, tomorrow in terms of what the reporting format would be. I guess we we don't I don't I can't really comment on that because we haven't um, talked about it. Um, I can say from being on one of the working groups leading up to the release of the white paper, the the information that was shared amongst the working group was under an embargo. So we were not permitted, as you may recall, both myself and our treasurer, Michael Beal, reported to council multiple time that we weren't allowed to talk publicly about what was being discussed on that on that group. I don't know if the same uh, rules will apply in this case, um, but certainly that's on my um, list to ask our facilitator at our kickoff meeting tomorrow, and then I will report that back to to council probably as early as the regular council meeting on Monday night. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Bill. Yes, I um, I really appreciate. Uh, first of all, I appreciate what what staff do and the difficult position that they are in. We can instruct staff to report back to us on everything they hear, and they can make that statement to that group. And if that group doesn't want them to do that, then they can say, well, don't tell us information that we can't share. But again, this is a common theme in everything I'm going to say. We don't have to go passively into this. Um, you know, they uh, we can direct them to report back on everything they hear. And if they're going to hear stuff which they feel they cannot report back, then they can recuse themselves. I mean, I I, I don't think we should go along quite so passively in um, what the province is shoving down our throat. Thanks, Bill. Uh, any anyone else? Anybody want to want to say anything else before we move on? No, OK. Um, so on on the agenda, I had a uh, a presentation on municipal structure. I had contacted originally I contacted Michael Fox um, to see if he could come on the call and just give us a, a presentation on uh, wards at large and a hybrid model um, disadvantages, advantages, pros, cons, so that um, council staff and uh, and any um, residents on the call could have some idea about what we were talking about. Um, Mike Fox has moved away from Sackville. Um, he and his wife are, are both retired now and they're living in Ontario. So he reached out to me and suggested Mario Levesque. Uh, so I contacted Mario. He was keen on getting on the call. And then this morning he had to cancel because he had an appointment in Moncton this after, uh, later this evening. Um, he did send me uh, a document that he put together today, and I had a, a half hour uh, Zoom call with him quickly just to clarify some points about um, what he had sent me. So I'm just going to share my screen and uh, I, I'll just kind of read through some things. And then if there's any questions, but at least give us some idea about um, ward structure and at large. Uh, so I, I have never shared my screen before, so I will try this out and see what happens. Um, OK, one sec. Um, let's try this. Can can I can you guys see that? Yeah, wow, that was easy. Um, OK, so I hope that that's re like you can read that, but um, <clears throat> So uh, Mario had put this together. Um, so I guess we'll start. I, I guess maybe I'll, I'll briefly just say there's there's no easy answer to this, right? Well, both of them have significant advantages, and both of them have significant disadvantages. Now, well, the one thing that he didn't cover in this was a hybrid model. Um, I also didn't ask him to comment specifically on Sackville or Dorchester or our municipality, more just to talk broadly about what. Um, these kinds of municipal structures can look like. 
Um, so for mayor and council at large, it says obviously the representatives can live anywhere. The mayor would be elected at large. Uh, some of the advantages, potentially more attuned to interests of the whole community, tend to promote policies uh, for the benefit of the region. Uh, yeah, it, he made a, a, an error there, but it says um, favoring incumbents and he put especially well-funded ones. Now that could be, in my opinion, an advantage or a disadvantage, um, but typically you end up having uh, a lot of incumbents in, a, in an at-large um, uh, structure. Potentially less conflict, and he, I asked him about that and he elaborated on it. And, and basically with, with a ward system, you, you tend to have a, a, some more conflicts because people who, uh, councillors who would represent wards uh, would, would, would lobby on behalf of their, the section of the, of the community that they deal with. Um, electors have greater choice and flexibility in elections. Each voter has an opportunity to consider every candidate for election rather than an award system. A large number of councillors to approach with concerns rather than just one or two councillors uh, for a ward. And potentially fewer acclamations. Uh, oftentimes in wards, when they're in smaller uh, areas, you might only have one person running, in which case they would just get in um, by acclamation. Deputy Mayor Black. Uh, yes. So, sorry to interrupt. Is there, is there a way for you to zoom in on that a little bit? I'm, I'm sure people on the call are having a bit of trouble uh, reading the reading the text. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, let's see here. Maybe a layout. No. Uh, lower right hand corner. You got a slide. Yeah. Yeah. Lower right down. Lower oh, right hand, right -hand corner. corner? Oh yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Just scroll kind of it up till you get to one page. Is that there better? You. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll continue on with the disadvantages of, of the uh, at-large. So in the disadvantages, um, you can elect all members from one region only, uh, typically more wealthy ones. So I guess wealthy regions, thus lessening voice of other regions of municipality, typically less wealthy ones. So if it was an at-large um, at uh, format, then there might there would probably be more representatives running from let's say Sackville or Dorchester than there would be from the outlying areas, um, and so you may end up losing some voice from the from the currently LSD areas. A larger area to campaign, favoring better funded candidates and incumbents, um, which isn't a huge concern in in our area, but um, but the point needs to be made. Often leads to significant. Uh, I think that's supposed to be points of view underrepresented. So again, if you have a lot of um, uh, candidates that are from, let's say, Sackville and Dorchester rather than the LSDs, then um, some of the concerns from the LSD areas might not be uh, represented as well in council. Councillors can be tone deaf to particular regions. That's kind of already been talked about. Uh, who does what for councillors? That what he means there is, uh, let's say, somebody living in Westcock. Um, might not know exactly who to talk to. Um, and, and so there, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. Uh, and then confusing ballots, as there would be many candidates listed rather than an award system where it's you know a few councillors per uh, area. Uh, in the ward system, representatives live in wards they wish to represent, mayor elected at large. Uh, advantages, more representative of all parts of municipalities, including economically challenged areas. Voters are more likely to know the ward candidates because they run from their area. Councillors are better aware of local issues potentially and, and are potentially easier to access for concerns. Uh, easier for candidates to campaign as geographically smaller areas. And so the campaign costs are lower. Um, typically a greater diversity of views expressed because you would have representatives uh, on the ground in like some of the LSD areas, for example. Clearer lines of communication and responsibility for councillors, so who is responsible for what area rather than as a whole. Uh, a simpler ballot for uh, voters and potentially a higher voter turnout 
as some of the um, wards would, the people who would be voting would know their candidates within their wards. Uh, disadvantages, it can lead to regional thinking. That is representatives' interests tied more closely to ward they represent and less to the whole municipality. Uh, tend, and then there's a, a, a tend to promote policies that benefit their particular ward. Potentially uh, an increase in vote trading and implications for spending. And I had asked about this and he basically is sort of a shaking hand. So let's say we had a, a ward councillor from Point de Butte and a ward councillor from Sackville LSD and the Sackville LSD person was pushing for something that was particular to their area. Um, the Point de Butte representative may say, well, you know, I'll, I'll vote with you. Um, if you if you vote with me, you know, there's there's that kind of stuff that could possibly happen. And the implications for spending, if one board received something, maybe a piece of infrastructure, um, you know, uh, possibly a, a bylaw change, whatever it could be, the another area might say, well, if they have it, then we want it. So there there is that implication for spending in that case. Uh, potentially less choice of candidates. Um, so more acclamations. Uh, if not liking your ward representative, who to approach? So that there is a, a confusion element there for, for people. Uh, there are the ward boundary issues. Uh, so this is more when the, you divide the wards up. So what areas fall into what ward? And that can cause a lot of problems for people. Um, and then potential by-election issues. So Oftentimes, ward representatives, there might only be one uh, person uh, who runs and they get in by acclamation, or there might be two, possibly, or more. But anyway, if a ward representative uh, falls ill or is unable to uh, serve as a counselor, then there needs to be a by-election. Uh, whereas with an uh, at-large, you have the rest of council who can still do the work uh, for the entire area, if that makes sense. Uh, and then he, he gave some suggested reading as well, but um, that's pretty much, you know, great. Now I have to figure out how to not share my screen. Oh, here we go. Okay, am I back? Yes. Um, so I know that was like a real quick um, rundown of that, um, but, uh, Mario didn't have uh, an idea about what would be best for Sackville. Um, he did have a suggestion that he, and he said it's just his personal opinion, that he hopes whatever happens, that it's a small council um, rather than something that's uh, bloated and, and huge. So if it was a council at large, he suggested a maximum of seven. If it was a counselor, if it was a if it was a hybrid model or a ward system, um, possibly upwards of thirteen, but not getting any more than that. So one, maybe some counselors at large in Sackville, um, and then each of the LSD areas would have one or two uh, ward counselors. So um, you know, anyway, those were just his personal suggestions. He didn't have uh, he didn't want to press what he believed should happen. Um, he just wanted to give the facts as to uh, the wards versus at large. So I, I, I see that there's questions. I will do my, my best <laughs> to answer them. Um, yeah, anyway, so let me just get back to my participant list. I think, uh, Mike, you had your hand up first, so go ahead. Okay, just a couple. Uh, first, who does Mario work for? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mario is, he works at Mount Allison. He is the he's an associate professor and head of the Department of Politics and International Relations at Mount A. Very good. And he did he have any information of the, uh, on the hybrid method? Uh, no, he didn't talk about the hybrid model. He talked about wards and at large only. Yes, yeah, so we um, could extrapolate and get them ourselves from the two lists. So. Okay, that's right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess if if there was a hybrid model, you could make the assumption that. You know, some of the advantages of one, the, the advantages of both of them would kind of be there and the disadvantages would both be there. Um, so you're right, you could you could kind of uh, extrapolate and figure out which would, what would it, it would be like, so. Right on, um, thank you. Oh, sorry, Mike, was that it? Yeah, okay. 
Uh, Bill, you're next. Thank you. Um, and thanks for doing this. I believe this document is on the government's website because I've just seen it recently. Um, the town of Sackville has decided that that uh, at large representation is the best way to do it. We're not um, <laughs> we're not going to get to decide what we want. Uh, and I, I know I appreciate that I'm going to sound like a broken record, but we are only allowed to come up with things that are acceptable to the minister. So we can decide whatever we want, but it will be what they approve of. Um, the uh, Mike made a, an analogy last week, which I really liked. Um, we got on a bus thinking we were going to Moncton and we found out we were going to Halifax. And I say, hey, I don't want to go to Halifax. And they say, well, too bad. The bus is going to Halifax. But you get to decide whether we go by the Wentworth Valley or take the toll road. Right. So that's what we're asked that we're being asked to do. But we're going to Halifax and we don't want to go to Halifax. And so I I'm not interested in deciding which is the best way to do the wrong thing. Um, and I know and I, the fact that I may disagree with you doesn't mean I think you're wrong. I have no idea what the best thing to do is. I can only decide what I think is the best thing to do. Um, my experience has been uh, people are a little more favorable at the end of a dispute with people who were part of the resistance and people who collaborated with the oppressor. Um, but that's not I mean, in the past, people were had to be heroes to do the right thing. We don't have to be heroes. There's no there's no risk here. Um, and uh, but I don't think that we should be uh, giving cover to this. And if we start saying, well, yeah, we want a hybrid model. Well, we found that in our first conversation with Chad. It's not going to be at large. He's already decided that. So council wanted that to be and he said no. And so it's going to be what he wants, which will be hybrid. And we can talk about the merits of each, but that's what it's going to be. Um, and I'm not really interested in deciding which of the two things we don't want is best. Um, while I agree that uh, it seems like the, not to get into this too much, but it seems that the reform process, a lot of it is pretty much said and done. Um, by the province, the way that it has rolled out. Um, I don't know what to expect from the advisory committee meeting. I, I really don't. Um, I, I know that in the emails from Chad, he's looking for consensus. Now, um, he, you know, he might be being, he might be just playing nice, um, but I, I'm hopeful that that's, that there is some bend, some give. Uh, there have been stories around the province of other municipalities who have asked for slight changes and those changes have been accepted. Um, so anyway, I'll leave it at that. But the, but the one thing that I will say is that it's pretty clear from, from Mr. Peters' emails that he's looking for, um, he's looking for suggestions, uh, not, not particularly direction, but suggestions so that people that advisor that the advisory committee can can discuss and talk about. So, you know, if it if we don't have to necessarily pick one, right? If we if we have a discussion and you know there there seems to be some strong leaning towards an at-large system, then we talk about that. If there's a, a a strong leaning towards a hybrid model or a ward model, then we talk about that. And so I guess having more to talk about at the advisory committee meeting is probably better than having one idea uh, and just sitting there and sitting on it and sticking to it and you know folding up our arms and saying this is what we want and we're not going to do anything else um anyway so the 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 transition facilitator is looking for suggestions so I, I guess keep that in, in mind. Um, Allison, go ahead. I'm I'm interested. Can you elaborate? Um, it, it sort of took me by surprise when you were discussing how uh, Mario had suggested if uh, to keep it small, especially if we were going with at large, no more than seven. Well, we have eight now, um, but 
that didn't surprise me. But then when you said the if we went with wards, you know, maybe 13, that's a huge difference. So why? Why would wards mean it would be OK to have a massive council? I mean, that's a bigger expense for the municipality. So I was wondering if if you had any insight as to why that is. Um, well, I, I, I can't speak for him. <laughs> Um, but I guess th those are his maximum numbers. Now, this was just sort of an aside that he made after running through uh, the, the differences between the two. Um, he has felt that Sackville Town Council currently is too big, that eight representatives on Sack for a, a, a town the size of Sackville is too much. Um, and if you look at some other municipalities in the province, I mean, it varies, right? Some municipalities have a lot, some have a few. Um, but Sackville doesn't need eight councillors. So for an area even as big as we will potentially become as Entity 40, he feels that seven is the high end uh, at large. Now, the reason that the war and 13 is the highest that you would go with wards. And it, what he was talking about was if you had um let's say you had three at large councillors in Sackville and maybe one from Dorchester then you could have one ward councillor from from each of the LSDs maybe one from Point of Butte one from Sackville LSD one from Dorchester LSD um so that would give you what uh three four five six seven but if you did two ward councillors per then that would put that number up. So by having two ward councillors, maybe it would just give you um, more access, I guess, to re to a representative. Um, so some places do more than one ward councillor. Some places only have one ward per. Uh, so it, it was just he he didn't want to see it be too too big. I guess that was his thing. He said, keep it small and simple. Now, again, that was just his personal opinion. He was not trying to say that that's the way it should be, but that was just his personal opinion. Um, sorry, Allison, did point you? Of order, just point of order, Andrew. I, I, I don't want to get too bogged down here, and I want other people to get a chance to talk, but we didn't get the chance for any of the public to say anything last week, except by mistake. So can we make sure we leave time to let members of the public ask questions or make statements? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Allison. Were you, was that it for you? Yeah, was that answer? Okay. Um, Sabine, go ahead. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so a couple things that I shared with council that I just wanted to share with a larger group as well. So all information is on the table. Um, New Brunswick currently has eight communities that are a mixed hybrid system. And the largest one of that is Moncton with 10 councillors, just, you know, the question to 13 or seven or whatever. So Moncton has eight ward councillors and two at large. Um, some more smaller communities, Belle has three um, at large and two ward councillors. Just so you have that in mind, there's only eight communities in, in all of New Brunswick at this current time. Um, so it's a mixed mixed bag and they're all definitely not 13 currently not 13 councillors. The second the second piece that I wanted to share was, um, so as you know, there's other amalgamations going on. One is um, Capelli and Beaubassin East. And um, in addition to something that I want to talk later about, but that councillor from that I contacted from there also mentioned that they have a mixed at large uh, ward system in, I think, Beaubassin East, or they have had one and it's a terrible, it was terrible. Like they really, they really couldn't stand it. So um, for whatever reason, um, you know, I, I would have liked to have Mario there. That's that's true information, getting the person who actually knows best about the stuff, um, somebody or a couple of them, and then getting uh, getting information from others that have actually lived through a, a, a system where you've got more more central community entities plus um, these these more rural areas involved. So that kind of information we are not getting firsthand, which um, I just can't accept. 
Um, and it would have been really useful to have that because I, I think I mentioned that before, we should not work on gut or feelings, we should work on information. Plus, we have not heard at all from the from LSD. So that entire engagement process around this is missing. And I will mention this again, um, and I'll also bring this up on Monday, of course. But this is the biggest problem with all of this, that we're sort of have this pseudo consensus system where there's more LSD representatives than elected officials at the advisory committee with a pseudo decision making process where, you know, I like the analogy of going to Halifax instead of you no know, going to wherever it was instead of wherever it was. And you have two choices. OK, that's not really a choice. That's it's an either or. So there's no consensus about an either or um, getting ideas. I think this is the role of this meeting is more like getting sort of a sense of what's out there. But I, for one, will refuse to give direction to our two representatives to bring any of my um, um, gut feelings to this advisory committee. So I will not. I will not. And I, I will ask our two representatives to actually express that I, with, I withhold my, um, my agreement to bring any ideas to this advisory committee because we have totally missed the boat. Process is flawed, but the engagement is missing. This is so important for all of us. How many there are, how many counselors there will be, and how they're being represented and what the system is. It's so crucial for how we elect, how we as citizens of this region of Entity 40 will elect our future council. And so I can't I cannot be part of being, you know, being part of the council has directed. I will not be part of that direction to the advisory committee. But my biggest thing is that we're not, we can't ask the questions that we need to ask. But I agree with Bill, we also really meant to get some, just some thoughts from the community members that are here, which is not engagement, which is a very limited number of people in the first place. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Thanks. Sabine. Yeah, and and I mean, obviously, if that's that's your prerogative. If you don't want to, if, if you don't want to to uh, give some suggestion, that's 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 fine. That's perfect. Um, it's not perfect. I didn't mean that to sound uh, condescending. Um, and, and I agree. And speaking with my counselor hat on, but also from UMNB, um, the LSD engagement through this whole reform process has been terrible. Um, they, they tried in the late stages of the engagement process, they meaning the minister and his department, to hold uh, sort of town hall meetings within uh, local service districts around the province, and it really didn't do much of anything. Um, and you're right, it, it, it's severely lacking. Um, yeah, I forgot I forgot one thing, Andrew, before you go on, because I meant, I meant to say that, and we have not heard from Fort Foley, and Fort Foley has not been engaged in this process either. It's a I, big, I, big, big problem. I have reached out to uh, Chief Knockwood. I phoned the band office today and um, left a message with the secretary. So hopefully I'll have a conversation with her uh, at some point in the next couple of days. That's perfect. But again, that's not your role. That's government's role. And somebody and Fort Foley should be sitting on the advisory committee as well. So, so the, there's just a, a, the string of failures in this process is just increasing and popping up more and more. So, but thank you, Andrew, for doing this. Very much appreciated. I think it's important that council is seen as being aware of that failure and reaching out. Um, Matt, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, to Sabine's point, um, one of the, the numbers I was going to reference was uh, City of Moncton. I think the population is around 75,000 and there's 10 uh, councillors to a large and eight wards. So I can't see that uh, we would need any any more than the eight that we have. Um, so I've been I've been working away kind of on my own. Um, I've been kind of an island, um, you know, in, in support of this. And I have a couple words to say about that. We won't, I won't take much time. Um, but I do have a proposal that I've come up with, which I'll email to all the council, uh, you know, just after this meeting um, so that we can we can sh start sharing that back and forth. Um, so just something I wanted to say was within this council, our personal opinions on the municipal reform process may differ. However, our responsibilities as councillors do not. This responsibility is to represent our constituents impartially, regardless of what situation we are faced with, with the goal being to achieve the best possible outcome for them. I feel we need to change the focus on municipal reform away from a negative tone. Entering into a complex process with many invested parties, such as the creation of Entity 40 
with a negative approach is not good positioning. We are negatively impacting the future relationships and outcomes with all involved communities and the provincial government. Refusing to accept our responsibility in this process and resisting change is negatively impacting our constituents and the outcomes of this process for years to come. The new Council of Elected Community Leaders will include representatives from all areas of Entity 40 and entering this relationship with the sentiment that Sackville has been forcefully amalgamated by the reform process is not conducive to achieving a mutually respectful starting point. As I have stated previously publicly, this messaging is not good. We must all put our personal ideals aside and do our job for the people who we are here to represent, all 5,331 of them. It is time to step back and see the larger, longer term picture. We were elected to find resolve to complicated and uncomfortable issues, and this municipal reform is one of them. Municipal reform is happening, and we need to begin proposing logical solutions to decisions that we can influence in the process. I was initially wary of the reform process as well, but I went away and studied everything I could find for past reference documents. Bill 82, the Green and White Paper, the Finn Report, Equal Opportunities Legislations. My conclusion, as I have stated from the beginning, is that the creation of Entity 40 will benefit our residents long term, and that's why I am in support. Did I like the proposal initially? No. I love the town of Sackville as it is, but it was evident that reform was not going to be stopped. It was happening, and I knew my responsibility was to represent our citizens the best I could through the process. Starting now, given the tight timelines that the province has laid out, I feel we need to come together in a professional manner and start proposing collaborative ideas to ensure we reach the absolute best outcome we can achieve for our constituents. I am committed to participation in a positive, respectful, collaborative process in the best interest of the residents of Sackville. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Matt. Um, I think it's important to add to that, that if um, I think it's pretty clear that if we don't participate and I don't mean by participation, I don't mean, uh, you know, you know, 100 percent holding hands and skipping over the rainbow. But if we don't participate, uh, the government will do whatever they want. So having some uh, some say in what happens along the way whether it's the advisory committee or the administrative committee and voicing concerns and pushing as much as we possibly can um, is important. But if we if we don't do anything, then they'll just roll in and do whatever they want. That's that's clear with the legislation the way that it is, that that's what will happen. Um, you know, I, I, I agree with what some of Matt has said. Um, I'm I'm not. My feeling is that I, I want to be there to voice my concern and voice the concerns of Sackville um, when, uh, whenever I want to and whenever I feel it's necessary. Um, and, it, and it won't always be an, an easy conversation, but being firm and fair, I think, is a, is a good way to approach this. Um, because if if there isn't conversation and back and forth, like I said, we'll be steamrolled. Um, you know, and I mean, as it is, we've said it time and again, we don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of control in this process anyway, as council. So it's my feeling that once the advisory committee is done, its job, which is the last thing that'll be on the plate is the name of the community, we'll just be sitting back and waiting for the rest of it to happen. Um, Anyway, but thank you, Matt. Thank, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, Sabine, go ahead. Uh, you're muted, Sabine. So just because I want to be fair, because I took issue with uh, the mayor chastising us on Monday for doing our job. Um, and and yeah, you know, I respect your opinion, Matt, but our responsibility as elected officials is also um, to make sure that um, democratic processes are, are maintained and our responsibility to our citizens and our communities also to make sure that they're being engaged in a, in a manner that is appropriate and, and to its fullest possible in a process um, that 
that determines how they're going to elect future councillors. So that is also responsibility. So while I agree that uh, the amalgamation is happening, there is no question about this. And I think we've all accepted it. But where did Andrew go? You must have lost. Oh, he's still there. Um, and, sorry. And, uh, and as you said, by all means, we need to be part of the conversations. But that doesn't mean um, that it's all hunky-dory and go on along um, with a process. So um, I still maintain very strongly that it's not, no longer about the amalgamation. That is not the discussion that we have. We all agree it's wrong and we all agree it's going ahead. But it is about fighting every single step of the way for our community to have a voice. That is our role. That's what we were elected for. And having a voice means that there has to be appropriate engagement. And so our role is every step of the way to get more from the government representative than what they're giving us. And I circle, that's what I meant to mention as well. I circulated another email earlier today to council about um, the conversations Bobasan East and Kapile have been having with their transition person, their government representative. And they have been able to get equal representation and more counselors actually on the advisory committee than we were told was possible. So I believe, and I'm hoping, I hope I don't misquote them, um, it's about five and five, Kapile five and Bobasan East five. And there's counselors there, not just a mayor and a deputy mayor. So I, this, and this, this is just to mention that um, when Andrew mentioned that we need to be there, but we also need to be fight, we need to be fighting for these pieces that all along the way is it's our role to get more, to get more equal representation, to get more engagement, to get more community input as much as we can get. So that's that's a push that we need to continue. It's got nothing to do with being angry or upset or continuing to be angry or upset. It is our role. And I take that very seriously. And I think we all should take that very seriously to ask for more along the way and not just say, OK, let's just collaborate and find consensus. That is not our role here. Our role as councillors, what we were elected for, elected on, is to represent the community and to work with the community and to listen to the community and to have the opportunity to listen to the community. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Sabine. Um, so I don't see any more hands up. Just to, to move this along, um, I, I guess if there are any councillors on the call who would want to make any suggestions um, about the composition of council, so ward at large or hybrid, and the number of councillors um, that you think our, our entity 40 would need, um, you can put your hand up and speak. Just this would give I mean, the mayor is on the call as well, so it would give Sean and I some idea about what your thoughts are on it. If you want to speak up, that's fine. If you don't want to, that's fine. Um, and then uh, we'll move on to the next piece. Bruce? Um, I was talking to a couple of citizens within the town and also one of the councillors from Dorchester. Uh, when I mentioned um, the uh, committee being or the, the makeup being all at large, um, he said no, and so did the others. Uh, they recommended all wards, so that actually there would be fair representation all the way around. That's been the problem from the beginning, is that there has been no representation from the LSDs. They've had one person, Daniel Gauguin, and actually this is why the municipal reform was recommended in the first place, to give more representation. Um, so if it was all wards and there's five entities making up entity 40, then it would be two from each, which would be 10 and the mayor. So uh, that's just what they told me. Um, it seems pretty fair. I don't know if that's how they would like it or, um, but I think actually it would certainly be fair representation all the way around, but that's just what I was told. And, and talk to some people, and that's what they mentioned. So, and we'll see how that goes. We'll know more, I think, actually, Andrew, when you and Sean go to the advisory committee meeting, and we'll have more background to bring back to us to see exactly what that advisory committee is really all about, and uh, and exactly what the government 
has in mind um, uh, as to what's really going to take place. Uh, but um, but that's just some of the thoughts that I was told right now. So thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Um, when I was talking to um, Mario today, he had mentioned um, as well, he, he said, I just want to put it out there that you've got a lot of communities that are joining you that don't have any representation, have not had representation for a long, long time. And so, you know, looking at a ward system or some kind of a hybrid of it so that there would be representation would give people a sense of identity because at this point that they, they've had nothing. Um, and he also said, he said, I, I, I don't think I need to say this, Andrew, but the, the, the new municipality will take place, will, will be said and done January 1st, 2023. The new council will be in. And any of the changes that are not uh, satisfying can then be changed by that incoming council. So if it looks like, a, I don't know, a, a hybrid system is what is chosen, um, and very quickly, there's a realization that it's not working, then there can be changes that are made by the next council. Now that's seeing into the future, of course, uh, and then that council is gonna have a lot to deal with in the next you know, five to 10 years. Um, but it, it, at least what is seemingly said and done is not said and done. Um, anyway, but thanks, Bruce. Uh, Bill, go ahead. Thank you. Um, in response to uh, what Bruce said, uh, rep by pop are, are, <laughs> was the founding principle of Canada, representation by population. The idea of having an equal number of people from an unincorporated area with fewer than a thousand people, and the same as uh, the town of Sackville or the village of Dorchester is, uh, is not democratic. Uh, it, the wards have to be of comparable size or else one group of citizens, one voters count more than others. So that's a defining principle of our democratic tradition in Canada. So that's why at large is better because everybody has the same opportunity, represents the same number of constituents. And I'm glad you raised that point is that you said if we don't participate, uh, we will be steamrolled, but we're being steamrolled now and we will be steamrolled. We can only present options that are acceptable to them. However, the new council can continue to do whatever council can do so that all of these things can be changed unless they pass new legislation to keep us from doing it. So that's why I'm not worried about not participating in the process. We will get what they want, whether we participate or not. But if we participate, we're going to own it. Yeah, Bill, there, there are sections in Bill 82 that um, the stipulation is that the some of the powers, the sweeping powers of Bill 82 end. January, and I'm not sure, I might have this wrong, January 1st, 2023, or December 31st, 2022. Um, so those sweeping sort of overreach, in my opinion, um, is, is gone, and the new council will be able to govern the way that they're supposed to govern and be able to make those changes that they want to make uh, for the citizens. So um, anyone else, quickly? Anything else to say? No? Okay. Um, so we wanted to try to have an opportunity for the public to um, be able to talk about these two issues. So we're really looking for um, composition of council, number of councillors. Um, that's what we're talking about. These are the pressing issues that we really need to discuss. Um, Mr. Peters has said to reach out to the community. Now, again, we've said it a bunch of times already, this should really be the province that's doing this. It should be the minister's department and the transition facilitator who should be doing this. We are technically doing their work, not technically, we are doing their work for them in this case. Uh, let's make that clear. Um, but uh, if, you, if, if there's anyone who wants to say anything, please speak up um, and let us know your thoughts on, uh, on, these, on these issues. I see Bruce has Bruce work. You have your hand up. Yes, uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Black. I just have a question. I'm wondering if any thought was given to reaching out to Professor Jeff Martin 
at Mount A, who is actually Mount A's expert on municipal affairs and has written extensively on it and also is a former Sackville town councillor. So if he hasn't been consulted, I would actually urge you to consider that because he has a lot of knowledge. Thanks. Uh, yeah, Bruce, I, so I, I had originally reached out to Mike Fox um, and, I, and you know, full disclosure, I, I know Mike and, and his involvement with the community and, uh, and with council and with Mount Allison and anyway, so I've known Mike for a while. I reached out to Mike first, found out that he had moved away, and his suggestion was Mario. And if Mario wasn't available, then certainly talk to Jeff. And again, full disclosure, when I spoke to Mario, he said, I can give you the rundown. And this was just today, <laughs> this afternoon. He said, I can give you the rundown, but the guru on, on municipal affairs is really uh, Jeff Martin. So I, I profess that I, I did not have an opportunity to reach out to Jeff, but but you're absolutely right. I'm sure he would have something to say about the uh, council structure within the new municipality. Um, so yes, I he would have been next on the list, but Mario had jumped in and said he would do it. And then there was a, a last minute cancellation. So um, anyway. Thank you. No problem. Um, Anybody else? Oh, Sabine? Yeah, just a follow up from that. Um, and this is just a question whether we could invite him for Monday night to give a 10 minute sort of rundown at the council meeting. Is that, I don't know, even know if that's an option at all. Well, I, that's probably not a question for me. Um, I would suspect that, I mean, typically our regular council meeting is a meeting of, that we do our business where we don't have presentations. Our special council meeting is our presentation meeting. So my initial thoughts are no, um, but that, that might be a question more for staff and, uh, and or the mayor um, to respond. But that's my initial impression is that that is, is probably not likely. Um, Erica, you had your hand up? Yes, hi, um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I, I know this is not uh, this is not getting feedback from the public, but I, I did have a question about um, the idea of seeking and lobbying for a year extension. And I was curious what this committee, if if this committee was going to be talking about that, or or what your thoughts were on that. Um, well, it certainly wasn't on the agenda, and the mayor had, I believe, had just mentioned that on Monday night. Um, he had talked about that. Um, I mean, it, it's it it's certainly something that could be brought up at the advisory committee meeting. Um, you know, I, I I'm not sure how hard we could push, but if that was something that we, as in the advisory committee, would want to push for, then we could try. Um, I I don't know if the mayor would want to speak to that since he had uh, had mentioned it, but um, I think that bringing that to the advisory committee at least to, to ask the question of, of Mr. Peters to say is there any way that we can get an extension on some of the time uh, time frames um, it, it couldn't hurt certainly yeah I agree Andrew um, and that was uh, my thought process uh, when I spoke Monday evening um, also I, I think where we've been asked and you had mentioned to council anything to take back to UMMB. I think that's something as well, because I think there's other municipalities that are in the same circumstance. And, um, I, you know, I think it needs to be kind of kind of a several prong approach. So, um, and, and I think it's important to continue to, uh, to take that initiative uh, at the advisory committee level and also uh, through UMMB um, as, a, as a member of UMMB. Thanks, Sean. Could I ask one more thing? I know, I'll throw this out there too because I know Sabine has her hand up, so she might just and, like be able to comment on two things. Um, but the other thing I was wondering is, it seems that there has been this proposition from Councillor Evans that just not participating is an option. And I guess I'm wondering, like, I'd love to get the temperature of this committee just in terms of, well, how many how many people are actually considering that as something you might back and what you know like can can people expect this to come up at council or 
Yeah. What's the temperature there? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know if I guess I don't want to put counselors on the spot. If they want to, if they want to answer that question, they certainly can. If not, then maybe Erica could ask that question at a regular council meeting. Um, I'm not afraid to speak to it. Uh, I think I've made my position fairly clear. I will participate. I'm on the advisory committee and I will participate as much as possible. That being said, um, I know my concerns. I know the concerns that have been raised by um, my fellow councillors. Um, I've heard some concerns from the community, not a lot, um, but I have heard some concerns and I will voice those and I will push hard for answers and or some give some give from the uh, facilitator and the province. So yes, I will participate, but I will grudgingly participate. Uh, Sabine, you had your hand up next. Yeah, so just a, and I think I think it's perfectly fine to take the extension to the advice to the to the representative government representative the extension request, but I also want to highlight what you just mentioned. Bill eighty two runs out, and there is no way. I mean, for for any of the things that we could ever propose, that is the most unlikely to be accepted for that reason because they would have to go through the entire process of the legislature getting that through again, getting the extension through. Why are we under such a tight timeline? Because they know it's so tight that they need to just rush everything through to get to December. So that's just because as soon as you have a two hour, two, two year timeline, that act is no longer applicable. And then you get two years under basically um, an emergency order, which is, this is an equal type of thing. It's an, it's an, it's setting every other power aside. So an overreach, as Andrew pointed, the, the deputy mayor pointed out, it's an overreach of powers. So um, I don't think the government would want to do that within um, the timeline that they've left before the next election. That doesn't look good. That doesn't feel good. So that's just my opinion that the chances of that ever succeeding are close to zero. There's others that are more likely to succeed. Um, your second question, um, Erica, um, my feeling on that is... Um, uh, I, I would support council if council voted to not participate in the process, but I'm also with Andrew. Um, I try to push all along. If that's not the case, um, I will make sure that we push all along to an improvement of the process. So th those are the two. I mean, of course, there's the third one and just saying, oh, OK, we go along, but that's not an option. So I see those three pathways of um, refusing to participate in an essentially undemocratic and flawed process um, as a protest measure. The second one is um, participating, but with, with clear pressures all along of improving the process as much as possible. And the third one is saying, okay, well, let's just get steamrolled and, um, you know, uh, it's okay. So I know where I sit. I'd support number one and two, but not number three. Thanks, Sabine. Bill? Yeah, uh, Erica, if you can wait until next Monday, it won't be a straw poll. I, I have uh, my intention is to make a motion. Um, getting council to do what I think council should do. So according to Sabina, option number one, and you'll get your answer then. Um, I, I want to say, and I've said this all along, and in spite of what some people may think, um, I'm not angry about people with whom I disagree. Uh, I have a great deal of respect uh, for my colleagues who are agonizing over what the right thing to do is. And the fact that we disagree doesn't mean I even think they're wrong. Um, who knows what the best thing to do is? Um, so that's not an issue. But my, my, my feeling is this is a, a sham process. It's a flawed process and we should not participate. And I am going to make a motion on Monday um, with that intention. And you'll get an answer to your question. Um, one of the key points in all of this um, is the difference between possibility and probability. Um, I am not naive. I may be idealistic, but I'm not naive. It's the difference between being hopeful and being optimistic. I remain hopeful. I am not optimistic. Uh, hands up. I, oh, um, 
Ron, if, if you don't mind waiting, uh, just in case Bruce and Mike wanted to respond to that question. I do. Yep. I do, Andrew. As a matter of fact, uh, Erica, as a matter of fact, if you're looking for an answer from me, I will be working with the government to turn around and try and see what we can do in the best interest of the people of the town. Do I agree with the process completely? No. Is the process necessary? It has been for a number of years. Um, looking for the best way of trying to get things into the process that are going to be beneficial to the people of the town. Um, I'm going to work on that way because I think that's the best way to go, as a matter of fact. I mean, it's going to happen. We keep telling, we keep saying it's going to happen whether we like it or not. But, um, and all also, uh, I'd like to say, because of what's happening and the short timeline that we have, I really feel that some of it is going to come crashing down around the government's head. Um, and then there's going to have to be changes made even from the government in order to turn around and make things work uh, or hopefully work. So I want to work with them the best I can and still represent the people of the community. Um, I'm also concerned about the people on the outside, the LSDs. I, 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 I feel for them because a number of years they've had no representation. So. If it's going to be one entity, we need to find a way to turn around and work with everybody and see what we can do that's beneficial for all of us. But that's just my opinion. So I'll continue to to work with them and look for ways of getting things for us and for the benefit of all and see exactly how it comes down. But I this timeline thing is is scary. And I really feel that actually there's going to have to be some major changes made along the way because some of the things that they want to do right at the present time i don't think are going to work so we'll see as it goes along and i'm looking forward to seeing exactly how the meeting goes on the 15th with andrew and sean and the rest of them dorchester and south and the and i hope they get more lsd representatives so we can hear from everybody and be part of the whole process but that's my thoughts on it right now anyway thank you mike go ahead Okay, um, I wasn't going to answer that question right now. I was going to wait till Monday night. Uh, but uh, my two cents worth right now is is that uh, I will grudgingly work with the system, but I'm working for the community. I'm not working for the province. And so I want to make sure that uh, we give our two cents worth to show where the government is going wrong, which is should be very easy for us. I also want us to be able to bring the information back so we can inform the people just what a sham, as Councilor Evans says, this is. Uh, it's, it, it is pathetic, uh, but I think that uh, we need to keep the information flow going, give our two cents worth, uh, speak against certain ideas, which I'm sure there's going to be a lot of them, because they have a mandate and we and I think we have to be part of it to make sure we on the other side can say you're wrong for these reasons and then that can be brought back for the public to know going forward. I agree with Councillor Finney that there will be a, a day of reckoning coming and and hopefully that people don't forget uh, after that one year that what this um, dictator government has done um, take away our democratic rights. And, and I think that uh, we at that point can speak louder and push for other people uh, to get involved in other locations to say, is this what you want from a government? You give them majority and then they say, okay, now we're dictators. So I, I like what uh, Councillor Evans said about uh, approaching other communities to really speak up and get the voice out there. I, I know that there are many out there that are, are in favor of it, but I also know there's many who are not in favor of it. Uh, the government's doing this because it's gonna be good for them, not for us. Um, they will hold off on downloading and then they're gonna download and then this community is gonna be stuck trying to tax people to pay for the problems that they're creating. Um, a part two of that, which I was gonna talk about was uh, you were saying that uh, this is the province's job to go out 
and approach to people to get feedback and move forward. But we know how the government works. They held their consultations and then they came up with a totally different answer. Never mind what the people really said, here's what we're saying. So we can't trust the government to give us an accurate reading of what our people want and think. I agree we should protect this municipality first, but keep in mind when it gets in the new entity that we have to protect the LSTs also. Uh, and how we're gonna do that has to be worked out, so thank you. Uh, Erica, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll wait for, I guess, the discussion on Monday. Um, can I ask one more question or are we done time here, Andrew? Well, I, we're we're at 7.06. I see Ron still has his hand up and we do have a council meeting on Monday. Oh, someone has, I didn't see someone had their hand up. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, uh, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. Um, Ron Aiken. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Um, my experience on council is repeating itself because uh, Mike Tower stole my thunder again. Um, I uh, I would respectfully disagree with what Matt Astor Brooks has said. Um, the approach you're advocating works only if you're dealing with a like-minded partner. And in this case, plainly you're not. Um, the fix, as I see it, the fix is in. These consultations that we had last year were a complete and utter sham because um, none, I sat through three or four of them and I never heard the scheme that they've come up with proposed by anybody. What I see it as is the Finn report. Uh, elements taken out of the Finn report and just applied. And I reinforce that because um, one of the sort of four people running the show for this effort is Gerard Beliveau, who was a major architect of the Finn Report. So um, I have very little confidence this will go anywhere. And I agree with uh, Councillor Finney that this is going to blow up on them. And it's going to be very ugly. And unfortunately, municipalities will pay the price of trying to sort it out. Um, as a final comment, I've heard comments about the number of councillors. Uh, I one time did a, a quick run through the number of councillors uh, for communities like ours of towns, not cities, because that's a, it's a quite a different game. Um, we are just a tad above average based on the number of councillors per citizen. So we're, we're not uh, some is much smaller than us with 10 councillors. So um, on, on that front, the number of councillors is not something to get, I, I think, especially aggravated about um, because we're, as we stand, we're, we're, we're pretty good. So that's it, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Uh, Mike, you, still, you have your hand up, but were you, you just left it up? Okay. Um, so I guess I'll put it out there one more time. Um, if there's anyone on the call from the public who had anything to say about um, council composition, and uh, and possibly a number of councillors just uh, to give some thoughts or I guess any other councillors who haven't spoken up. Um, if not, then we can adjourn the meeting and call it a night. One more time, nobody? Okay. Excellent. Um, all right, well, I guess thank you, uh, thank you everyone. Thanks for attending. Um, it was a little shorter, 7.09 instead of 7.30, that's great. Um, we have a council meeting on Monday night, um, so tune in, uh, and uh, there'll be, I'm sure, some more discussion on municipal reform. But thanks, everyone, for attending. Have a good night. Stay safe. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, everyone.